Toodle Bud here, and of course, again, we are talking pens today, and today uh, we are talking about this little sweetie of a pen I picked up, this gorgeous vintage 1970s Pilot Elite. I love modern technology and uh, progression and everything and advancement, but there's just some things we did a little bit better many years ago. So let's roll through this thing, but first I just can't get my eyes off it, so let's just jump straight to the glam shots. It might only be uh, 18 grams worth of pen, but I tell you, you're not missing out on anything despite it being quite light. So this is the vintage equivalent of a modern day pen. A lot of people will look at, say, the Pilot E95S, uh, especially as a uh, first gold nibbed pen, and I considered one as well, but I didn't like the looks of the modern day one. And till I got my peepers on this thing, and this not only is it stunning it's a new old stock so a never been used pen as soon as i saw this it was a no choice choice but to go ahead and pick one up and i just got to say out of the gate here this is pretty much one of the classiest pens i think i own now i just love the looks of this pen so we're going to roll through it show you what it's all about do writing samples and some comparisons so let's get to it now, when you consider getting your very first gold nib pen, for a lot of people, it's kind of the same path. Maybe you think about a Lamy 2000, that was mine. There's also the Pilot Custom 74, the Platinum 3776, and there's also this little dude, the modern one, like I said, it's the Pilot E95S. Now, some just go all out, and they just go big, and they, they might even be their first pen, and they just get a Mont Blanc 149, but... That's a kind of a big gamble, so you want to kind of tiptoe into it. So I got my entry gold nib pen, and I moved on. I have gotten other ones since then, and I never really looked back at one of the entry ones. A lot of people mentioned this pen to me, the modern one, and I looked at them, thought they're okay. It's a good deal. It's a good buy. It's a pilot. It's a good quality pen, but it just didn't do it for me. Like I said, this was a no choice choice. I think this is one of the classiest looking pens I own. Starts off quite small. What are we talking about here when it's all collapsed and compact? What are we at? About 118 and change. Diameters, it's pretty small. This is usually not the type of dimensions I like on a pen for me, especially with my kind of larger mitts. So we got 11 millimeters, the body there, the grip's going to be even lower. The widest part of the body, just 12 and a quarter, right? So fairly small little pen. You uncap so that, you know, the proportions are funny, huge cap, small body. But then when you post it on there, you actually now have a legit full-size pen. Let's get you a measurement on that. Fully capped, it's about 147 millimeters or so. As a reference, here is the Lamy 2000. So you can see they're just a little bit uh, shorter than the Elite. Section starts off just over 11 millimeters. It tapers down. The most usable part, far do you go, about nine and a half or so. Here's a close-up of the nib. The uh, vintage one here, as you can see, it is 18 karat. The modern day ones are 14 karat. It's a, like a semi-hooded nib. Nothing too super flashy with it, but you can see there, Pilot, fine. It's got the 18K 750. And this nib performs exceptionally well. Like, I really, really enjoy the writing experience with it. Um, this is a cartridge and converter pen so this is a cool little thing here we are a pen from the 1970s and here we are with another pilot the pilot metropolitan and i didn't have a pilot con 40 to fit in here so i just took the squeezy converter from a metropolitan and put it into my vintage one and there's something to be said i know uh the proprietary filler systems and cartridges can be a bit of a pain but if you think from the business perspective here is a pen from the 1970s and you can take a cartridge from a brand new model pen and it fits in the old stuff. So that's, you know, you're controlling your product to make sure old and new still are backwards and forwards compatible, which is pretty darn neat. And if for whatever reason, the international standard size changed, 
they can go, well, our stuff still works. Here you go. So that's a kind of a cool feature when you think about it. You just take a vintage pen, take parts from a new one, put it in, and you, away you go. So yeah, I didn't have the Con 40, so I just grabbed that and I can just do the squeezy filler. This also uh, takes the Pilot uh, cartridges as well. This is the part that really sold me on the whole pen, <laughs> which is this cap. Just really beautiful. Anytime you do uh, black and chrome, it's just, it's going to look good. And then this treatment with these little rectangles all along, and you can just see the profile. It's got this nice uh, sweeping curvature to it. And you can see they even change the profile. So you got bigger ones here and they get ever so smaller as you go near the top with the proper spacing. Here's your pilot clip. It's a really well-built clip. It's got a spring action in here too. I love clips like that because these things just last forever. You're not uh, deforming the metal potentially and re relying on the springiness of it to go back to shape. You have a proper lever system in there and it just works really, really, really well. So amazing job on the clip. And this writing, if we look at that, that just goes so perfectly with the pen and the theme, that font on that Elite. I, I, it's just absolutely spot on. And the black fill in the background, I don't know if that's like an acrylic paint or just what. I was kind of thinking about how they actually made this. Did they paint the whole thing and then they ground the, the, the tops off there to get the shiny on the, on the top or somehow the paint flows and doesn't get to the top. So I was kind of contemplating how they did that detail on there. There we got some lighting and it's got a, a clutch some system very similar to say what's on a Parker 51 and, uh, and those types of pens that are in there as well. I do worry a little bit with these types of pens um, when you are going on to a relatively soft plastic with a little bit of marking up. And it does happen uh, just in the last week here that I've had the plan, uh, the pen, I've, you know, I've used it a fair amount because I've been enjoying it. And you'd see just, especially on black, you these tiny little micro scratches that weren't there, but I'd actually already polished some of them out just to see. I used a little bit of plastic polish. I'll put some info in the description, but it's the same gear I did when I restored my uh, Schaefer PFM. And this is the best part, just a beautiful slip cap, just the friction deal that they got going on with those pressure bars in there, but you don't hear anything. It's nice and silent and smooth. You know it's engaged, and then you just slide it down. There's a ring here, as you can see, to catch it, so it just goes all the way down there. A little snap, little click with it, and uh, even the name to go with it, Elite. This just, I don't know, man, maybe it's just me, but this just looks super, super sharp. I love the looks of that, a pen like that. This is the deal. If you are in uh, car sales or whatever type of sales, and this would be your closing pen, I think. <laughs> this this is the closer right here. I have a buddy who's uh, in car sales, and he's got his closing pen, and he says it never fails him. This would definitely be one of those pens. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just a, one of those timeless designs, it's a little bit similar to, say, a Lamy 2000, where uh, it's just got those right styling points and styling cues. Again, uh, when I chatted with Ben Walsh uh, from Gravitas Pens, he talked about everyone loves a black pen. Yeah, there's just, especially when you got black and chrome, or this case, like a black and satin, it just sets off quite nicely. But I think this one really has a beautiful, just beautiful style to it as well. Uh, I'm going to show you a few vintage pens just for comparison. We have more vintage pens than these, but I thought I'd put together just a few kind of classy, classic looking pens I have. Here we have an Aurora 88, the Schaefer PFM 5. This is a nice little Schaefer. I got to finish uh, doing some work on this one to bring it up back up the snuff. And then a uh, Parker Dual Fold that I just got as well. I uh, haven't even touched this one yet, so got some work to do on there. Some of those classic lines, classic styling that uh, just never goes away. And I think this thing just looks spectacular. It's also definitely in that pocket pen size range. There we got a Caveco Sport, my brand new Enso Titanium, and the Gravitas Pocket Pen. Um, those ones I'll put in my pocket, but this thing, I want to keep this thing pristine. It will not go in any pocket unless it's in some type of case. So onto the writing sample, I figured Japanese pen. Let's use some Japanese paper that I picked up at a Japanese store. And then for the ink, uh, <laughs> I only have two Japanese inks. I really looked at it. I got the Hiroshi Zuku Kompeki and another one of their inks is an orange one. I didn't want either of those in this pen. They just didn't seem like the right color. So I, I got to go get some more Japanese inks, obviously. But right now I got the Diamine Midnight.
what else can I say? I don't know. Other than just when something's done right, it's just done right. Like this thing is over 50 years old now, works perfectly and just looks beautiful. It writes absolutely wonderfully. Uh, I was very, very happy with it. The wetness, everything. I didn't have to tune anything. I just put ink in it. Away you go. And it's been flawless. Again, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But I even showed this to a buddy of mine who's not a pen guy whatsoever. And he just went, wow, that looks nice. So as far as what do I like and don't like about it, obviously, <laughs> if you haven't caught on, I like everything about the pen. What would I change? I don't know. I, I think if you changed anything, you would just mess it up. Uh, some of the newer ones, the, the nib does go further back. You get to see more nib. I know on the, the new E95S, and I think there was a version of this kind of started in the 80s, a little bit different as well. So, uh, you know, if you like this but want the slightly larger nib, keep your eyes out. I'm going to leave a, a comment there in the description some details uh who i bought it from so you know i found this on ebay there's always anxiety and apprehension about what do you get uh is it going to be a good pen and, and what they say this is exactly what they said it was the price was reasonable uh, about 120 bucks is the equivalent of what you're going to pay for a new one anyways or maybe ten dollars more so i thought let's for the extra 10 bucks let's get the one i really really want so pricing was reasonable shipping this thing came super fast i ordered yes i had to pay for the shipping bit of a pain but it arrived in i don't know maybe five days or something like that directly from japan so down below i'll like i said i'll leave some information but he mainly focuses on vintage japanese pens so pilots and sailors platinums and the like so speaking of likes Give me one of those thumbs up if you could. Leave some comments down below and subscribes help. Also, check in the uh, description. I, I, I kind of work on some affiliate links now. So if you are going to be purchasing some pens, uh, you just use the link and it, I make a dollar or two and it helps kind of support the channel. So that is mucho appreciated. Until then, we'll catch you next time.